So another type of problem is, in related rates is the uh, inflating balloon. Uh, so in this problem, we have a balloon which can be, uh, you know, usually it's a spherical balloon, although sometimes we see a cubical balloon that somehow manages to, to maintain the shape of a cube uh, all throughout the, uh, th throughout the problem. But uh, let's do the spherical balloon. So we have a spherical balloon that's being filled with gas at a rate of 3 cubic meters per minute. How fast is the surface area of the balloon changing when the radius is 5 meters? So uh, just to be clear, what we have here is we have a uh, balloon that's kind of, uh, it's kind of globe-shaped like this. Let's see. Actually, because that's the back of the balloon that you can't see, and um, we know is that you know this balloon has has a radius of r. It's changing. You don't want to say the radius is five meters. It's not a constant spherical balloon. It's it's a balloon that that's changing, but at some point in time, it will have a radius of five meters. Um, so let's assign variables very precisely. Let's see what appears in the, in the problem. Uh, we can certainly see is that v is volume. But as you should know by now, I'm not going to take volume as, as a precise definition. Uh, I'm going to say it's volume of the balloon in cubic meters. And there's also a radius, which is the radius of the balloon in, not a balloon, balloon in meters. Um, there's also T. Because clearly we're talking about something that's happening over time, because we're, we're inflating the balloon at a rate of three cubic meters per minute. So t is going to be not just time, but time in we're given minutes as the unit. It's not always going to be minutes. I know a lot of these problems I use minutes, but sometimes it's seconds, sometimes it's hours, sometimes it's centuries. Um, time in minutes since inflating began. And S, we're also asked about surface area. So let's call capital S the surface area of the balloon. And we measure area in square meters, not cubic meters or just linear meters. We measure it in square meters. So what rate is the problem looking for uh, in the form of d something over d something? Question is, how fast is the surface area changing at, at a particular time. So in other words, we're asking uh, how fast s is changing for every given unit that time changes. In other words, as time moves forward, at what rate is the area changing? So this is going to be the change in surface area per change in time. That's, that's the question. That answers the question of how fast the surface area is changing. So let's write one or more equations that relate the variables. The geometry really dictates the answer here. And this is one of those things where, once again, uh, recall that the definition of zero is the number of things that you ever learned in any math class that you're allowed to forget, in which case, uh, if you've been following that rule, you know that the volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed, and the surface area of a sphere is 4 of its great circles, so 4 pi r squared. So, okay, so that's the um, that's what you need to know about, uh, about volume and surface area of a balloon. So uh, let's see, with the equations then, I can simply write those out, are v equals 4 thirds pi r cubed and s equals 4 pi r squared. We can also extract from the problem, the balloon is being filled with gas at a rate of 3 cubic meters per minute. Well, when you fill something with gas, such as air or helium, what you're doing is you're increasing the volume of the balloon. So this is actually the rate at which the volume of the balloon is changing. And we know that we, the way we, we translate a rate of change into calculus is we write d something over d something else. So d, that means the volume, v, is changing with respect to time. That means that this statement means that dv over dt is equal to 3. So we can extract that from the statement of the problem, dv over dt is equal to 3. Now let's differentiate. We've covered in other videos that what we're going to do is if we have one variable in terms of another, we're just going to find an ordinary derivative, and then at the end we're just going to write d that variable over dt. I, I went over the theory of that, of why that's true. Uh, we're, uh, we're just going to do it now because we're going to go through this a little faster than we did on the earlier problems. So looking at this first equation, I have dv over dt is equal to 4 thirds times 3 is 4 pi r, and I reduce the I reduce the exponent by 1. So 4 thirds pi r cubed, its derivative is 4 pi r squared, but then because I'm differentiating with respect to t, I write d, this variable dr over dt, and then I do the same with s. 
I'm going to write ds over dt is 8 pi r, but then I have to do the same thing again, dr over dt. Okay, so recall that what I'm looking for is ds over dt. I have an equation for ds over dt, but the problem is I don't know what dr over dt is. The problem, I was able to extract from the problem what dv over dt is, but I don't know what dr over dt is. So that's a problem that I'm going to have to solve using this equation. The reason that helps is that I do know what dv over dt is, and I can write dr over dt in terms of things that I know. So what I want to do is let's write dr over dt in terms of dv over dt. I'm just going to divide this equation, both sides of this equation, by this term. So that means that dr over dt is equal to 1 over 4 pi r squared dv over dt. So with that fact, I can now rewrite this equation, this one here. ds over dt is equal to 8 pi r dr over dt, but I can substitute in this equation for dr over dt. So I'm simply going to replace this with 1 over 4 pi r squared dv over dt, where this is going to play the role of dr over dt like that. Now I can simply, uh, I can simply solve, uh, I guess rather simplify the expression, and that gives me, I'll come back down here, ds over dt is equal to 8 pi r over 4 pi r squared. Let's see, 8 pi over 4 pi is 2, and r over r squared just gives me one factor of r in the denominator, and then I still have this dv over dt in the equation. So now I really have everything that I, that I need in order to solve the problem. What we're told is that we're interested in the rate of change when the radius is 5 meters, so in other words, when r equals 5. And we also know that the constant rate of dv over dt is 3. So I can simply you know, substitute in r equals 5 and dv over dt equals 3. So this gives us 2 over 5 times 3. That gives us 6 over 5, and since we're talking about a rate of change of the surface area, the correct units for this are meters squared per minute. And that's the answer. And once again, I would like to show you the whole problem, but there's just way too much to show, so we'll just put the problem up here, and uh, you can go back and forth in the, uh, in the recording.